Next up on track is uh, the race that so uh, many people will have come to Silverstone today to see, the Classic Touring Car Racing Club Super Touring Car Trophy for the iconic cars of the 1990s, some iconic drivers in these machines as well. Combined with the Bertie Haulage Pre-03 Touring Cars, it's a split grid, will be a rolling start, 15 minute race, and uh, yesterday Ian caught up with a few of the drivers. Right, hello everybody, welcome down to Park Fermi. I, I just feel so lucky to be here this weekend with all of these wonderful cars. Somebody we uh, haven't chatted to yet, but we have to, is this man here, Gary Preble. Gary, uh, you had a great battle there, didn't you, with Chris? Talk us through that in race one. Yeah, I, I, had, a, I had a good start. Um, Chris has got quite a bit more straight line power than me. Um, that, that's quite apparent. But um, yeah, it was going swimmingly well. We were catching the Super Tourist hand over fist, which, which put a huge smile on my face because they were all <laughs> squabbling with each other. And managed to catch them all up and I thought this is shaping up to be a fantastic race and then we got sort of um, about sort of just over a third into the race and the car just developed a misfire um, wow. not sure why um, just kept sort of popping and, and, and sort of pulling back a little bit so I'm nursing the car a little bit playing around keeping an eye on all the temperatures and, and oil pre you know, oil pressures and, and fuel pressures and <laughs> what else I could look at and Chris caught me and I and, uh, a couple of laps just coming out the bottom uh, chicane it sort of died and then sort of picked back up again um, Chris got by and then all of a sudden it just cleared and it just went back to normal and so yeah I've managed to get past Chris again and probably supposed to say there Gary it's, it's the team back at base of all the laptops and all the fancy equipment it's not is it? it's just a bit of luck it's a bit of luck yeah yeah I need to look at to find out what's gone on in the telemetry but um, yeah we, we it's a bit of an odd one but I'm just pleased that whatever it was it cured itself and managed to come over for the win expecting uh, Mira's full again in race two. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, he'll be there for sure. <laughs> well done, Gary. Thanks, Congratulations. Uh, let's see. We've got Chris over here, actually. Let's see if we can have a quick word with him very, very quickly. Uh, I just wanted to say... Let's uh, one, literally one one word from Chris. Do you want me to worry with you? Chris, you're going to get him race two. You're going to get him. Yeah, that's the plan. That is the plan. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers. Well, there you go. And there you go. Right, it's almost time for race two, so I'm going to hand back to your commentator. Don't go. Thanks very much, Ian. Yes, getting ready for what will be a very special 15-minute uh, race coming up next. We'll take you through the grid, uh, hopefully in full for this one. In pole position for the Super Touring cars, based on the results of yesterday's race, is Ricard Rydell, a.k.a. Jason Minshaw in the uh, Volvo S40 that won the 1998 British Touring Car Championship in the hands of Ricard Rydell, the great Swede. Alongside him will be 67 Tony Absalom in the Mint Motorsport Cavalier. Second row, another Cavalier, that of Darren Fielding, the car built for the Spa 24 Hours in 1993, subsequently raced in BTCC by Ian Heward. Alongside him is Andrew Strachan in the uh, recently restored uh, Andy Rouse built Ford Mondeo. Never raced in BTCC though that car because uh, West Surrey Racing took over the Ford contracts for 1996. Row three, number seven Rob Salisbury in the ex Paula Cook Honda Accord had a few issues with that car yesterday as did John Cleland. Yes, John Cleland is here with one of his uh, 888 Vauxhall Vectras. Great to have the great Scotsman back out. BTCC champion in 1989 and 95 with Vauxhall in the Astra and the Cavalier. Racing the Vectra here today. Row four, number 50, Jim Pocklington in one of the very first super touring cars to be built from back in 1990. Raced in period by Chris Hodgetts, his Vauxhall Cavalier. It appeared with Ian Ashley in the BTCC as well. Originally it was a rear wheel drive car. Uh, Ian Ashley appeared with it, um, then uh, raced with Andy Clark in, in the Thunder Saloons and uh, Formula Saloons before Jim uh, acquired it. And alongside him, another legendary name, Anthony Reid. Came close to the BTCC title with Nissan in the late 90s and reunited with uh, one of the old Nissan Primera Super Tour as a car that I believe started its life in the German Super Tourenwagen Cup in the 90s, that particular Nissan. We should see his teammates in the ex-David Leslie car, Richard Wheeler from row five. He failed to start yesterday. Now, Anthony Reid did have some problems in yesterday's race, so we hope to see him back out. We had a few uh, Super Tourers with teething problems yesterday, unfortunately. And completing the grid, 
Uh, sadly, we haven't got Colin Turkington today, but the MGZS uh, that he raced yesterday is out there, and it's the car's owner, Jason Hughes, that should be driving it today. He did retire on the last lap, Colin Turkington, yesterday, though, so hopefully we'll see that car back out. Hopefully we'll get the full complement of 10 Super Touring cars. Then there's a gap, and we've got the uh, Bertie Haulage Pre-03 Touring cars. 191 Gary Preble, yesterday's winner on pole, and he was mixing it with the Super Tourers as well. Alongside him is Chris Southcott, both in Honda Civics. Then we've got Don Hughes in his Peugeot 306, and Ross Craig with his uh, dazzle camouflage liveried Honda. Then James Alford, Honda, Cavan Granger BMW. Vic Hope, another Honda Civic, and John Hillier in the BMW E36 Touring. Yes, Touring as in his state, won his class yesterday. Well, if Volvo can do it, so can BMW. One of the Volvo estates is here this weekend at Silverstone, the 850 from 1994, the ex-Jan Lammers car, but uh, it's only on static display in the paddock. Uh, the rest of the grid, Neil Ashcroft and Andy Abrams in a pair of Hondas. Uh, then we've got Steve Barber and Anton Martin, Honda and BMW, Simon Mann's BMW at the back. Yeah, a few cars on display in the paddock this weekend. There's an old uh, 60s Ford Falcon in Wood Brothers NASCAR colours. I thought that might be Alan Greenall's new car at first, but it's not. Oh, who else have we got in the uh, paddock? There's a couple of BTC Touring Vauxhall Astras, the ex Fiona Legates car and uh, an ex Ivan Muller one, and the ex Roland Ratzenberger E30 M3. The Demon Tweets car. That's owned, I believe, by the Mitchell family like uh, Chris Southcott is not there in front of the uh, pre-03 grid. So I think we're missing Chris. I don't see Anton Martin either. There's the BMW estate of uh, John Gillian. Anton Martin, number 330, the silver BMW is not there. And we are missing a few Super Tourers as well, unfortunately. There's a bit of a gap in the Super Touring field. Uh, one of the Nissans is not there. Um, Jason Hughes in the MGZS is not there. And um, I'm trying to work out which Nissan is not there. I don't think Darren Fielding's there either with the Cavalier, which is uh, a disappointment. But Jason Minshaw's Volvo is there. Tony Absalom in the Cavalier alongside him. No Darren Fielding, so it's Andrew Strachan in the Mondeo behind. John Cleland is there in his Vectra. Rob Salisbury, Jim Pocklington, and one of the Nissans. I think that's Anthony Reid's car completing the Super Touring entry. Yes, it is, as they go up towards the red lights, getting ready to go Super Touring racing here at Silverstone. And we are underway. 303 cars behind. Bit of a break in the 303 field early on. I wondered if we got underway there, a bit of confusion, but we are underway. Wonderful sight of 1990s Super Touring racers in action here at Silverstone. And John Cleland is straight away on the attack. The two-time BTCC champion through on the inside of Tony Absalom in the entry Richard K and Jamie Wall Cavalier. There are the pre 03s Their grid rather broke apart on the uh, rolling start. Gary Preble will be leading them, and he's already passed the Super Touring Honda of Rob Salisbury, the ex-Paula Cook Honda Accord. Never raced in works colours in period. That car was in the colours of DC Cook Racing. It's Minshaw, a.k.a. Ricard Rydell, who leads. John Cleland in second. Absalom third in the uh, Mint Motorsports Cavalier. And the right-hander at Stowe Corner. Fourth place is Anthony Reid. Many will remember his rivalry with Ricard Rydell from the uh, late 90s. They were not the best of friends on track at times, has to be said. Cleland goes for the lead into Club Corner. Side-by-side, side, Volvo and Vauxhall. They really are partying like it's 1998 out there. And the Vauxhall takes the lead. It'd be great if John Cleland could take a win here on his comeback. He was a late retirement in yesterday's race. Here comes Tony Absalom. Used to race a very modified VW Golf before switching to Super Touring. Anthony Reid has a look there. Reunited with his Nissan. Fourth place in there. He's raced touring cars all over the world. Was successful in the Japanese Championship back in the 90s as well. Absalom attacking Jason Minshaw. Holds the inside line. Reed could get him on the exit. And up there with him is Jim Pocklington in the classic 1990 livery. Colours raced by Jeff Allen and John Cleland, among others. In the very earliest days of Super Touring. Andrew Strachan has dropped back behind Gary Preble. Look at Preble going in the uh, Honda Civic there, leading the Pre-03s. He's mixing it with the Super Tourers here. 
great to see Gary Preble in one of these Super Tourers. I reckon he'd fly in one of these cars. Minshaw up the inside, retakes the lead from Cleland into Stoke Corner. Mason Minshaw in the Volvo used by uh, Rydell and uh, Gianni Morbidelli in 1998 before it was bought by Jan Flash Nilsson, who used to win the Swedish Championship. Raced in Sweden and Norway before being repatriated to the UK. The Vectra John Cleland is driving. Uh, he never raced that actual car in period. It was, uh, it was uh, Derek Warwick who used that car. Race at Bathurst as well. Whoops, uh, Tony Absalom wide onto the grass. And it's almost three wide as they go into uh, Abbey there. Anthony Reid had a look on the inside. Gary Preble, look out. Don't hit the back of uh, Tony Absalom. Very valuable these days, these super touring cars. There we see Rydell, well, it's Jason Minshaw, and Rydell learned the name on the window. Rydell, Cleland and Reid fighting for the lead at Silverstone. It could be 1998, this could Tony Absalom still there in fourth as Reid goes for the inside, side by side with Cleland. Andrew Strachan keeping up with Jim Pocklington. Jim had a spell in the BTCC himself in a BMW back in uh, 2007, I believe it was. Andrew Strachan in the Rouse built Mondeo, never raced in Britain. Spent most of his racing life in the Czech Republic of all places, a driver called Josef Kopeski, but never mind that, as Anthony Reid up the inside takes the lead from uh, Jason Minshaw. Cleland down to third. It'd be great if Reid or Cleland could win this. One of the legendary names here, and Tony Absalom's having a go as well. He wants a win here. A more modern BTCC driver has raced that uh, in uh, revival events as well, Frank Rathor took the wheel of it a few years ago. Tim Sugden has raced that car too. That was back in period of the Tourist Trophy at Donington. Ricard Rydell, aka Jason Minshaw, takes the lead back again from Anthony Reid. They're swapping places for fun, these three, as we saw yesterday, until Reid and Cleland hit trouble. More Super Touring cars are ready to come out for this series, or being made ready, as Reid retakes Minshaw again. Cleland will follow him through into second place. We had hoped to have the German Stefan Ermler here this weekend with his uh, Opel Astra Super Touring car, originally raced in South Africa, built by MSD Motorsport Development, and raced by the great Mike Briggs in South Africa. But that car uh, wasn't ready. We're also hoping to see uh, one of the Nescafe Renaults out in the hands of Mark Jones, the Nescafe Bled 37, ex Jason Plato, Jean Christophe Bouillon cars, as Reed and Cleland battle for the lead. Here at Silverstone on a circuit layout, they never raced on in period these cars, the international circuit. Look at Sir Minshaw up the inside of both of them. And he's done it. That is a move worthy of Ricard Rydell. Absalom watching on from fourth, and Kerry Pebble saying, I want a bit of this as well. He's dominating the pre 03s. His main rival from yesterday, Chris Southcott, not out unfortunately. This is brilliant stuff once again. Major nostalgia trip for everyone here at Silverstone. Four rounds of this series planned this year for the Classic Touring Car Racing Club, and it's already a phenomenal success. Hopefully, we'll see more and more Super Touring Cars come out as the year goes on. Sadly, we didn't see Jason Hughes in the BTC Spec MG ZS. Uh, problems with that car yesterday in the hands of the great Colin Turkington. Jason also owns uh, an XBTCC uh, Jason Plato Vectra. He'll be defending the classic Thunder title with that this year, but uh, that car not ready for this weekend. Here comes one of the BMWs, that's Cavan Granger through the link. We mustn't forget the uh, 303s as well. Preble leads them. Uh, second is Don Hughes, further back in the Peugeot 306. We'll call him Simon Harrison, shall we? Then we've got Ross Craig in another of the Honda Civics, third ahead of Cavan Granger, James Oxford. Tony Absalom in the uh, mid motorsport Cavalier, chasing the big three in front. We'll say he's leading the independence class, shall we? Car Anthony Reid is driving, uh, as we say, I believe originally raced in Germany before being bought by the Dodd family to race in uh, Super Touring Revival events in the UK. He's then sold on to Richard Wheeler, you know, behind Brisky Racing. He's just taken the lead there, Anthony Reid. Richard Wheeler was meant to be out this weekend in the ex-David Leslie Nissan from 1998. Sadly has failed to race. He came out in qualifying with teething troubles with that car. 
seen Richard race his Nissan GTR last season in Brick Car. Inshore up the inside. There's Cavan Granger running well in the 303s with his BMW. As I said yesterday, it's like the uh, last years of Super Touring, about the year 2000, isn't it? We've got um, the 303s playing the Super Production class that raced in British Touring cars at the time for a couple of years. Reed leads. Inshore and Cleland, seven and a half minutes to go, so we're at half distance. Coming up to lap Simon Mann, the ex-time attack driver in his BMW. Inshore has a look as they come through Abbey. Retakes the lead once again. This is not just a demonstration. This is proper touring car racing. It is, of course, a year this month since we lost the legendary Murray Walker. He'll be looking down with great pride, I'm sure, on these cars. His voice accompanied the BTCC for so many years. And subsequently, Charlie Cox, the Australian, and uh, John Watson, the ex Grand Prix winner. They formed a great commentary team as well. I hope they're watching on today. Reed has a look on the inside at Stowe, side by side with Jason Minshaw. Clellan keeping a watching brief. Absalom's dropped away a little bit now in the Cavalier. Minshaw again up the inside. He's so much stronger through this section of the circuit. Reed goes a bit wide. Minshaw leads. Here comes Clellan. John Clellan is driving like he's never been away. Debut came back in 1989 in a Mark II Astra. That was the multi class era of the BTCC. John Clellan won Class C in all but one race that year to win the title. And then in 1995, he was at the wheel of a Cavalier. His teammate was a young man called James Thompson. As Clellan raced his second title, defeating the likes of Alan Menu, Ricard Rydell, Tim Harvey. It's Tim Harvey now one of the voices of the BTCC on the television. Andrew Strachan still going well in the Mondeo up there in fifth place ahead of Gary Preble now our 303 leader. We must forget the 303s as well. Preble is well clear of Don Hughes in the yellow Peugeot. There he is in the background. He's up by about seven seconds. Third in 303 is Ross Craig. Side by side between Minshaw and Clellan now for the lead. Anthony Reid tries to get the shuffle through the club chicane. It's almost a chicane through there. Side by side with Rydell, aka okay, Minshaw. Can't resist calling it Ricard Rydell. Coming up to lap 114 in the Tom Chilton Honda lookalike with the Lego livery, that's Steve Barber. He's raced uh, Renault Clio's in the past and Ford Anglia's before that. A battle further back. Ross Craig, there's the uh, dazzle camouflage livery Honda. He's called Jim Pocklington in the 1990 Cavalier. Racing a plain blue livery in Thunder Saloons and uh, Formula Saloons for many years. Great to see him back in the old Vauxhall Works colours. Cleland has the lead. Now, four and a half minutes to go. Bring the house down if John Cleland can win this. by Anthony Reid. He's not going to give up without a fight. He's up the inside of his old BTCC rival. Takes the lead at Stowe. I was about five years old when I first saw a BTCC meeting. That was at Donington Park in 1991, I remember. And I was hooked from the moment I saw them. As you can probably tell, my exciting tones this weekend. Back then it was uh, the likes of uh, Steve Soper, Jeff Allen, Rob Gravitz. John Clellan was there, of course, in the Vauxhall. That's uh, Vauxhall Jim Pocklington is driving. May well have been on the grid that weekend. Subsequently, that uh, Vauxhall appeared in the Demon Tweaks colours of Ian Ashley in 1993 as a privateer car. Three minutes to go now. It's Anthony Reid out front. Here comes Minshaw to the inside of Cleland. Scotsman holds him off. Lap one of the Honda Civics 
past there. Okay, he'll stay out of the way. It's number 119. That's Neil Ashcroft. That's the leader through. Reed's able to get a bit of a break there as they lap the back marker. They've got 192 ahead of them as well. That is John Hillier, the BMW Touring. Here comes Minshaw back at the inside. There is Gary Preble, still dominating the pre 03s, looking to retain his title this year. A bit of a twitch there from Anthony Reed and a spin for 119. That's at Abbey. That's Neil Ascroft, who just been lapped. It's not Hurst Racing. Honda rejoins. Okay, it's now Reed, Cleland, Minshaw, still the order. Two minutes to go. Now, will it be? I think it will be last lap this time. They come up to lap. Uh, that's Vic Hope in his Honda. On the regular at uh, Brands Hatch in their saloon series. It drops Tony Absalom here. He's well back in the Cavalier, as is Andrew Strachan in the Mondeo. Stored by uh, the Strachan family. Big Midbury falls back to the UK from the Czech Republic. John Cleland is not finished yet. We may get two more laps out of this. Wait and see. Is the last lap board going to go out this time? Have a look as they come out of club. No, it doesn't, so he will get two more laps. Jason Minshaw's not finished yet. Look at the way the Volvo's going in that third place. Swing through the right-hander at Abbey. Nissan, Vauxhall, Volvo. Independent Vauxhall further back now, nearly seven seconds down, Tony Absalom. Through the link. Coming up to lap the uh, very brightly coloured... Uh, Honda Civic of James Alford, the uh, luminous green machine there. He's running 12th overall and 4th in the, uh, sorry, 5th in the 303s. In short to the inside, Cleland defends. I think Cleland is just biding his time, waiting for an attack on Anthony Reid. He'd love to beat his old rival here. To the outside, in short to the inside, there could be three wide into club. Minshaw thinks better of it, else he would have hit the back of Reed. They're still side by side for second place. Here comes Jason Minshaw in the Ricard Rydell Mon Volvo. He takes second place around the outside of John Cleland at Club Corner. You don't see that very often. Kevin Granger about to be lapped in the uh, BMW. Simon Mallaby are two laps down shortly. The newcomer to uh, racing, the time attack before. The Volvo is going for the lead here. Jason Minshaw wants to beat the established touring car legends. Minshaw family have raced in BTCC back in the late 80s. It was Alan Minshaw who uh, had the Demon Tweaks BMW. That's the car that famously nearly ended up in the lake at Alton Park. In a tangle with, uh, I think it was Frank Sidner in the world's BMW. Frank's still active in historic racing. Minshaw goes for the outside. They've uh, dropped John Cleland slightly now. Don't tell me the Vectra's got a problem again. They're pulling away from him. Minshaw to the inside. He's free to attack the Nissan now. He's on the inside going into club corner. Side by side. He clucks up there almost. This is reminiscent of 1998. Reed against Rydell again. Takes him wide onto the kerb. Reed up the inside. Is it going to be checkered flag this time? Yes, it is. Reed gets there ahead of the Volvo and the Vauxhall, fantastic. The gap between the three of them, 0.6 of a second. That was like a proper BTCC race there through the final corners. Now, the, um, I think um, Anthony Reid may not have seen the chequered flag there because he continuing at full speed. Gary Preble, meanwhile, comes in to win the pre-03 category. Flashes the lights, he crosses the line just behind our Andrew Strachan in the Mondeo. Uh, Tony Absalom took fourth place and Andrew Strachan fifth, uh, Preble sixth overall. Next home it'll be Don Hughes in the Peugeot 306, there he is. Didn't see much of him during that race, a rather lonely race for him. And Ross Craig, eighth and third in Prio 3. Anthony Reed, as I say, I don't think saw the chequered flag there, he continued at speed. Making up for a non-finish yesterday, hope we can get a word with Anthony and hopefully with John Cleland as well. Great to hear from the legendary Scots. Anthony Reid to speak to him. You wouldn't know he was Scottish. He speaks perfect Queen's English. And 
let's take a look at the uh, results then. Well done to uh, Anthony Reid, staving off the pressure from uh, Jason Minshaw and John Cleland. Cleland was probably going for first, but he had to settle for third place there. Well ahead of Tony Absalom in the Cavalier and Andrew Strachan in the Mondeo. Gary Preble wins the Prio 3 split ahead of Don Hughes and Ross Craig, then Jim Pocklington and Rob Salisbury, the other Super Tourers. Last cars on the lead lap. Kevin Granger next ahead of James Alford, Vic Hope, John Hillier and uh, the 119 of Neil Ashcroft surviving a late spin. Ranger, a class winner as well. Looking at uh, the uh, timing, I think all 17 cars made it home. That's great to see. Uh, well done to the Super Tourers. What a great revival event this has been. We'll see them back out later in the season. We'll head down to Ian in Park Ferme shortly. Hopefully to hear from Anthony Reid, Jason Minshaw and John Cleland hear from them in a moment. Next up is the Dunlop Mini Challenge Mini 7 category. The uh, Mini 7 uh, scholarship class in big numbers as well. It's a 20 minute race coming up shortly. Hopefully we can head down to Park Ferme in a moment. Enjoying the action uh, so far, everyone. Wonderful nostalgia trip with the uh, Super Tourers there. Thanks to everybody who has uh, been watching today. Plenty of viewers on our stream. And we can now head down uh, to Ian Waterhouse in Park Fermi to hear from some of the drivers. Wow, well, look okay, at everybody. I've got a big smile on my face. I mean, just look at, look at this. I mean, wow. Uh, let's go have a quick chat. We've got uh, Jason Minshaw, of course, winner yesterday. We've also got John Clem. Uh, Jason, another great race, isn't it? I just I don't know where to look. I don't know what to do, you guys. How do you do it out there? Because you just don't have any time to think, do you? No, there's plenty of time to think. It's loads of time. It's just thinking all the time is, when's Reedy going to hit me? <laughs> It's been a good weekend, all right? Yeah, no, it's really good. We got a little bit of damage, but it's, it's nothing structural, so. You just buff that out, can't you? Yeah, buff that out and big ammo behind that bit, we'll be fine. Congratulations, Cheers, well thank done. You. been a wonderful weekend as well. Hello. Uh, <laughs> let's go have a chat with John Clemmed in a second. We've got Anthony Reid as well. I mean, wow. Again, just look at these cars whilst we're here. Look at that blast down memory lane, isn't it? It really is sort of, dare I say, reminded me of my childhood. Uh, I'll say it anyway, why not? Uh, as you can see, just go through a few media duties. Let's let's grab a quick word with uh, Anthony. Anthony, quick question. That was absolutely sensational. How good has it been to be back here at Silverstone? Absolutely epic. Uh, to be given this uh, fantastic opportunity, thanks to Richard Wheeler, to race uh, along some of the great names in touring cars and uh, 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 GT racing. The... Uh, do you know, it's one of the toughest races I've had in the last, well, since <laughs> I was it racing in period. I mean, that last lap in the, uh, co the uh, yeah. club, it was, you know, touching door handles. I was being pushed out wide, but I managed to get back in. It was, yeah, it was sensational. I mean, it was fantastic to watch. I mean, what an amazing way to see Super Tourers back on the grid after this break, you know finishing like that. Let's just say, it, it kind of takes me back to my childhood, I suppose. But, I mean, thank you as well for, for bringing Anthony Richard along as well. He should have been out today. He should have been, and he deserved to because he was so quick in qualifying. Only half a second yeah, yeah. off Anthony my time. Tried, Anthony drove his race yesterday. He actually tried to get me to drive the car today. And I said to him, no, drive the car because you've got it set up exactly how you want it. And proof of the pudding, he won the race. I mean, it's just great. Well, really. Gentlemen, thank you so much. You've made a lot of people very happy this weekend. Thank you very much. Uh, right, let's keep going. If you can stay with us, I did want to see if we can grab John Clement for a second as well. Uh, we generally mean it, don't we? They've made a lot of people smile. Look at how many people are here as well. They've come out to see these legends are racing. At one point yesterday, we had top three of John Clennon, Anthony Reid and Colin Turkington. Uh, I mean, it's just incredible stuff. It's better than the real thing as well. And uh, as you can see, John's just been handed a little Scale Electrics car as well. Uh, it's got Plato on the side, though. I don't know if you can see that. 
with that. Yeah, no problem. We're going to take a quick picture. We'll let them do that. If you've still got time to stay with us, do stay with us. Uh, and let's have a little. Let's put the camera on, John. Here, there we go. Look at that. Lovely stuff. <laughs> I didn't build it, these guys did. Yeah, no, John, just a quick I word if we... Early, I it's for, for all of you, you know? Because I sat there and watched you do it. It's fantastic. Team job. John, right. I just want to say, you've made a lot of people very happy this weekend, but you've got a big smile on your face as well. What has it been like racing here? Yeah, it's been, it's been great. It's really nice to see these cars back out and being driven the way they were meant to be driven in the period. Um, Jason's car is a rocket ship in a straight line, and he's learning to drive that a lot more now. But Anthony, like myself have done a squillion laps in Nissans and Vectras respectively. You, you just smile when you drive them because when you're on the ragged edge with these cars, they're dancing around all the time and they're never in one place. They're always nervous. They're always trying to bite you. They're always trying to get away from you. And you've got to know that, you know, like turn one, for instance, you're going through there and it's no matter what you dial with bars and things like that, yeah. she's still trying to bite you all the time. And it's just great. And they sound... Glorious. I mean, they're just glorious sound of cars. There's no let out from any of you, is there, out there? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it was uh, there's a bit of paint change signs between these pair, but I, I was I was fortunate enough to stay out of it. <laughs> John, thanks so much. Thanks for coming down. Appreciate it. Right, I know the action is coming thick and fast. Let's hand back to your commentator. They've got on.